We have uh, Alexi in San Fran and Jarbox in Hong Kong. Okay, we'll be quick. So how do you think we should do this? We have uh, uh, two people from remote, one in San Francisco, the uh, product development lead for Privacy Badger. So this is a bit of a, a shift in focus. And then we have somebody in Hong Kong who is really a guru of ARM, uh, low cost computers, and he's been on this guy Charbox. I don't know if people have seen him, but millions and millions of people have seen his videos. Of He's just taking, if you haven't seen any, you should because he's taking people through amazing tours of all these chip factories and tablet factories and notebook factories uh, throughout, you know, kind of China and Shenzhen and, and, uh, and we can't see the video. Although I can see now. It's kind of a small screen. John Fox, are you there? Oh, we didn't, uh, oh, hello. We didn't, we didn't go HDMI to VGA to HDMI, that's for sure. Uh, so, so what we have, we have two folks on the line. Uh, one is Alexi from the EFF. And uh, he's going to talk about privacy badger and sort of the, the, a little bit of a theme around privacy. Of course, all the stuff that's been going on with Facebook and the congressional hearings. And, uh, you know, there was a new thing that was announced today, which is this cyber tech group uh, affiliation of 30 plus or something like that, high tech companies. And, and so there's kind of a lot of cool cyber stuff. So, okay, great. And then after Alexi goes, uh, we'll, he'll take some questions and then we'll switch over to, uh, to Hong Kong. And Jarbox. Okay. So Alexi, take it away. <coughs> Alexi is having connectivity issues. <laughs> Double two? Yeah. I think Facebook is trying to block his uh, connection. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do is make the quick switch from San Francisco to Hong Kong. And Jarbox, if you could uh, take it from here. Give him the rundown. We gave I him. We gave him a tally on your millions of videos, but um, take it from here. Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Charbax. I'm from armdevices.net. So uh, I try to have a French accent because I'm from Switzerland, but uh, I'm in Hong Kong right now at the China Fair where they have lots of cool G. Uh, there's like six top exhibitors. They're all from Zen showing uh, basically iPhone keys and uh, no, not, not quite, but there's a lot of, uh, uh, they're trying to innovate, you know, because they're all kind of going out of business with uh, the tablet market crashing and stuff like that. Um, I was at the supercomputing uh, event a few months ago where I filmed the, the awesome Boston team. I think you won, right? I think you beat... Uh, yes, we won. Did you beat the Chinese, right? <laughs> I think Trump is uh, hoping that you will beat the Chinese at least next time. Uh, without using ZTE or Huawei uh, hardware. Uh, but, oh, so, uh, uh, but you cannot see what I'm what I'm doing, right? There's only sound. Okay. Only sound. There's only sound, but you so, so, you sound great. You have a great connection. So my website is called ArmDevices.net. I've been doing that for 15 years, talking about the ARM stuff, because I'm sure Intel is just about to die. I mean, I've been thinking that for the last 15 years, but I think it's happening now because uh, everybody's ditching Intel, right? I mean, we'll see. Uh, especially China. I think there's a good chance China will try to find something, an alternative to the big uh, American chipset. So maybe, you know, right now ARM is Japanese and Saudi Arabia. Who knows? Maybe it's going to be acquired by the Chinese soon and uh, there'll be even some more ARM stuff going on. So maybe, uh, well, I'm kind of looking forward to the, the ARM part supercomputers. So maybe if you want to win next year, if you want to be the Chinese, I think you have to uh, focus on the ARM technology. That, I mean, that's just my, kind of like my, the, the, I say all the time, I just say ARM, ARM, ARM. That's why my website is called ARMDevice.net. But uh, I wonder, did you, are you using any ARM in your super? You talk about supercomputers, right? Do you have some ARM going on? <coughs> so the BU team might be Qualcomm. Yeah. So as soon as you said Qualcomm, he cut out. What was the deal there? What was the deal? <laughs> oh, he's back. He's back. Yeah. Am I back or Alex A? No, you're back. You're you're still on, Charbox. And HPC is the new. Sorry about that. But this, this is 
Um, by new phone. Is it Gemini? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think what's happening here is. Something still has it on. It's got that twilight zone effect, though, doesn't it? Try again, Chapman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something still has it on. Hi. I'm sorry, I had connection difficulties earlier. I had to restart. Okay, over to Alexi in San Francisco. How are you, Alexi? I'm okay. Uh, so sorry about the connection trouble. That's okay. Uh, Charflex, if you could just kind of uh, park it at the red light for a moment, please. Sorry. Uh, Charflex, yeah, any chance you're still I think, there? I think one important uh, takeaway from this is uh, we, we definitely don't want uh, two different machines connecting to the same Jitsi thing in the same room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, uh, so I, I apologize. We, you, you got to play for Charflex. Uh, Kurt and I have actually for a long time been trying to get that guy to, you know, blow through here during one of his mm -hmm. uh, across, you know, universe travels. And I think this is the first time we've actually <coughs> met him, you know, live. Charbox? In, in Charbox, yeah. in, in any yeah. way, shape, or form. So maybe what we can do is we can post along with the notes to this meeting, uh, mm -hmm. maybe a few of his video clips mm -hmm. and, and a further follow-up. But he, he did, and, and they were both really patient, as was as were the people here. So thank you for that. For, for other people who have really labored through establishing hardware, you know, or test labs. Or... Charbox, are you still there? <laughs> yeah, I'm back, sorry. Oh, you... <laughs> so that was my question. Can we, can we watch him on your screen? <laughs> God bless you. I, I, uh, for or, sure it was moot at this point. But, well, uh, well, Charbox is back. So, so um, well, here, you can, you can take over. No, it can just turn the screen around. Uh, uh, well, unfortunately, he's gone dark on me. So this is the dark. Hey, hey what's up? Wait, hang on. We'll plug you. We'll plug you in again. And I apologize for the uh, the cutaway there. Are you there? No, no problem. No problem. It's maybe it's because I'm using. We, we have Can a, you hear that? We have a little Wi-Fi lag or something like that going on. Okay, I'll I'll turn off my camera. Maybe uh, it's, I'm too far. You know, I'm in Hong Kong. Maybe I shouldn't have my camera on. Or just you know, or just you know, come to Cambridge. But yeah, turn if you turn <laughs> if you turn the camera off, it actually um, it may be better. Say hi to the NSA. Yeah. So uh, are you in a, are you in the MIT, right? Yeah. Yeah. We'll send you a picture. That's really cool. Of you so, on the screen. So what? what one of the one of the reasons I'm video blogging is because of the amazing uh, MIT Media Lab project called the uh, One Laptop Per Child, uh, which was a non per laptop project, you know. It was uh, uh, one of the original projects to try to kill Intel and make <laughs> laptops cheaper around the world. And that was really amazing, and I think they kind of succeeded in some ways, you know, like they forced Intel to half the price of all laptops in the world, so that was good. But uh, it's not quite enough, you know. The, the I'm, I'm, like, I, I'm doing videos about ARM devices, but what I, what I really want to see is more ARM-powered laptops. I want to see stuff where people buy uh, products that are in the market of uh, the consumer Intel stuff. So, so I've been using ARM-powered laptops exclusively since 2012 because they have been a bunch of ARM-powered Chromebooks, which is what I'm using right now. I'm using an ARM-powered uh, Samsung Chromebook Plus, uh, which is I think it's the coolest device in the world. It's really fantastic. It's like 300 something dollars. You can find it maybe. Uh, it's very thin and light, but maybe it crashes. I don't know. Uh, just before when there was a bunch of people joining the chat, uh, something crashed. But I mean, it seems like a really nice open source video chatting system here. Um, your I audio think also streaming. Your audio is great right now, Charbox. I, uh, I mean, we don't have video, but the audio is fine. So what do you want to hear about Hong Kong? Do you want to hear about the smells or <laughs> the noises? The food? Um, are, are, the, you know, are the tech centers for shopping, does the stuff just come directly in from Shenzhen and, and get offloaded into the markets of Hong Kong? Well, one of the things about the Hong Kong, as far as I understand, is that it's uh, a lot of stuff that you don't, like, you don't quite get it in Shenzhen, because in Shenzhen, uh, there's a Chinese tax on everything. So actually, if you want to buy an iPhone in Shenzhen, there's like a 50% tax on it. So you have to pay $1,200 or $1,300 for an iPhone. That's what they mean. So the Chinese, they, they kind of like going over here to, to Hong Kong and buying it for $800 and saving $500. But um, 
uh, if you want real cool stuff, I think it's, it's, it's better to find it in Shenzhen, which is actually just the last subway stop. It's the last subway, it's Shenzhen. So it's just uh, 45 minutes from here. And then Shenzhen is 50 million people because there's, there's all these cities around Shenzhen that are kind of growing into Shenzhen. So if you take all of Shenzhen, it's 50 million people. It's become the biggest city in the world. Uh, the average age is 27. Uh, it's just a bunch of uh, young people all over China. They come in to, uh, to dominate the world of technology, kind of. They just make everything in Shenzhen in two weeks. You just uh, if you have an idea and you have five thousand dollars, you can get them to do whatever you want, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, to is it's so cool to walk around at, with all these design houses that are in Shenzhen, where you, you can uh, just come up with some ideas. You can you can start with a development board, and then you can say, hey, uh, I took this all winner chipset, and the chipset is only five dollars, which is an ARM chipset. And then you can do whatever you want. You can make a a smart vacuum cleaner or a smart uh, smart bed or smart sofa, whatever you want. So there, they'll just do it. There are some smart people in the room here. If they have ideas for things like the smart vacuum sofa bed, they, they can get you in touch with you and you can help connect them with the right people? Real yeah, or you, you, you know, it's $400 return flight. So next time you buy an iPhone, I mean, I hope you don't have iPhones, but it's the next time you think about buying an iPhone, just don't buy an iPhone. And then you can fly to, to China. You can fly to Hong Kong for half the price of an iPhone, a uh, return flight. And then uh, you can spend a couple of weeks and visiting all these little design houses. And uh, that's actually the, the, the most important thing that they need right now. Uh, I'm not trying to say that they don't have ideas, but they, they really need new ideas. They need uh, something to not stay alive, but to you know to come up with a new, uh, basically come up with a new iPhone. So because the smartphone market is getting kind of cannibalized and maybe the prices are going to go down eventually, hopefully. So you think and you could so arrange it? Would you, new. would you arrange a tour if a group of people wanted to go over and visit en masse with you? Would you tour people through the, some of these design houses that you're familiar with? Yeah, let's do that. Let's, uh, next time uh, something blows up, like with uh, Trump or North Korea or something, we can just we can, we, we can go we can do go on a tour that that goes by North Korea on the way if you want. So we can uh, cheer for Trump when he has a meeting. The, he, he has, the, has the tariff uh, affected? What do people think of that? Because it's significant. I mean, we are effectively in a trade war with China. And it sounds like, I mean, even Hong Kong is in a trade war with China at this point, but what, what do people think about that? Um, well, I think it's, hopefully, it could be quite fantastic. Uh, it could be quite great in, in, a, in a way that I've been waiting for a very long time, because I'm not only a, an Intel hater, I'm also an Apple hater. I don't know if you heard. <laughs> but, uh, right on. Uh, I, think, I think there's, a, there's an opportunity right now for China to ban the iPhone. <laughs> because uh, basically the U.S. has banned Chinese phones from the U.S. market. So I think China should just say, oh, you want to ban Huawei and ZTE? We're going to ban the iPhone. And uh, we will, by the way, the uh, Qualcomm chipsets, and we're going to make our own, you know? Uh, okay, maybe that's not very positive, but I'm just saying this is quite exciting. I'm saying there's a chance that maybe, you know, Apple, 90% of their profits are coming from only from the iPhone, not even from the iPad or the MacBook or anything. It's just the iPhone. So uh, the way that I'm hoping they're going to ban it is not just the sales in China, but actually the manufacturing. Because Trump really wants to make iPhones in the US. So I think China should just say, OK, good luck. Try to make them in the US. I mean, he's an anti I'm not anti-American, you know? I'm just, uh, <laughs> no, it's, I'm just it's, thinking it, it's exciting. It's exciting times. I think Trump is a really funny kind of character. Can I ask a Linux question? Uh, we have a question <laughs> from the back. Yeah. Since, since this is the, the Linux group, what, can you tell us a little bit about what you're running on your Samsung Chromebook, like what uh, Linux, and if you had problems with certain distributions or some work better than others? So um, uh, Google is doing a little bit uh, to help people. Uh, you can crout on it to some different kind of Linuxes that are running uh, quite okay. It's like a, a rock chips processor, which is very interesting. So it's a Samsung Chromebook, a beautiful, ultra thin, ultra light, the, the most 
nicest, thinnest laptop you've maybe I've ever seen. But then it runs a Rockchip processor, which is a Chinese ARM processor, dual core A A72 and a quad core A53. But the thing about this chipset is that it's 28 nanometers, so it's not even the latest of the ARM. You know, it's like a two, three, four years old kind of technology. So uh, what's happening right now, which is also very exciting, is that um, there's a bunch of Qualcomm powered laptops coming out, and they are using the Snapdragon 835. And uh, what I've heard is that you can go in, into the BIOS and you can disable uh, secure boot. So you can actually install Linux on them. So you don't have to run Microsoft. I don't know if you are big fans of Microsoft, but you don't have to run Windows on the ARM. You could potentially just run any Linux you like. And it's actually a very, very powerful 10 nanometer ARM processor. Uh, didn't, those. Uh, didn't, uh, I, I think you meant you don't have to run a Chrome OS, you can run your favorite Linux distribution, right? Yeah, yeah, you can run uh, any kind of uh, Linux, you, there, there's a bunch of Linuxes that work, you can just run those if you want. But what uh, are you running? I'm, maybe I'm boring, I don't know, I just use Chrome OS, I, I think it's very simple and, and it works. Uh, but of course, uh, I'd like to see some improvements in the uh, Chrome OS, uh, maybe support for some different application. Right now, they, they, in the last few months, they added support for Android apps in Chrome OS, but it'd be nice if they could add support for other kind of Linux apps. Great. Any other last minute? One question from Kurt, and then uh, we'll give you a round of applause, Charbucks. But thanks a million for uh, joining us tonight. This is great. Kurt, you can wrap it. Hey, Charbucks, are there any Risk Five products coming out of Hong Kong? Uh, so, you know, RISC V is very interesting, but what I think RISC V is, is maybe some Linux Intel employees to kind of disrupt uh, what's going on with the ARM. Maybe, I'm not sure, but uh, it's, it sounds like there's a lot of companies that are supposedly on the, joining the RISC V, but I think they're just doing it to put pressure on the ARM and keep the prices low. So we'll see what happens, but um, I don't think this. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll see. I mean, it's very interesting. I'm, I'm just about to post a half an hour interview with the founder of the Risk V that I filmed at the Embedder World. Um, I just need to write some text. Actually, I have a lot of backlog of videos. I've, I just filmed too many videos that I don't have time to pu publish. That's the point. Basically, I just filmed them for myself, and I'm, I'm not even putting them on my YouTube sometimes. Well, no, it's not true, but... If, if you post that video of the interview, then we will certainly include it in the meeting uh, wrap-up, if that's okay. Cool. Okay, I'll send you the secret link, so you'll be the exclusive first ones to see it if you want. I also posted a very cool half hour, uh, very full interview of the student cluster competition from the supercomputing event in Denver, you know? I don't know if you saw that, but it's a, it's, a, it's cool. It's all those uh, students uh, doing their supercomputers. Charbucks, thanks a million for joining in. We appreciate it. Back to you guys. So thanks. So his yeah. website's called armdevices.net. He's got he's got charbacks.org, but armdevices.net is the site he's talking about. I don't recall us having done anything, certainly not San Francisco and Hong Kong in the same evening. And all things considered, once we finally get the thing plugged in and working, it more or less worked okay. Yeah, right? It's unbelievable that it actually worked. I mean, <laughs> you know, from, from Kurt, Kurt and I were here like on thir on whatever it was, Tuesday or yeah, Monday yeah, yeah. or, you know, just kind of plugging wires to Kurt's like jig a little, little bit more, you know? And, then, and that's, the, that's the key. We forgot so the Vaseline. We, we actually might, you know, if, if, uh, if you would do it again. But we did think that this, this is a wonderful way to get amazing people, Jerry and John as the organizers of this meeting. It's, you know, you can kind of invite somebody to come online from the comfort of their, you know, hotel in, in Singapore, right? And they'll actually join you. Or of course they'll never fly. Yeah, uh, most companies use video conferencing software. I know yeah. at Red Hat we used BlueJeans, which was yeah. very similar to this. Um, or there's WebEx and a couple others. Yeah. And this, uh, the, this is Jitsi, Jitsi.org. I mean, it's free. It's yeah. easy to use. We had some glitches with the built-in uh, classroom system because it doesn't have, you can't get access to the audio 
of yep. the mic and the, and the camera. So, mm -hmm. and, and then we had this other system that, but the audio wasn't really going out. So there's some glitches, but by the next time we do this, it might actually work. Yeah. Yeah, make sure you clean, uh, clean up after uh, so. Yeah. I just wanted to know.